So now I'm going to talk about anticoagulation therapy in people with AFib. Um, it's a really important topic for those, especially with AFib, because the chance for thrombotic events goes up significantly uh, if you suffer from this. Um, patients are generally put on uh, warfarin therapy or chronic aspirin therapy um, in the hopes to kind of thin out their blood to kind of prevent uh, clots from forming. The course of treatment is generally decided by a chad vas score. Um, it's an, it's a kind of an objective way to uh, classify points based upon a patient's presentation, and depending on what their score is, we can determine what the course of therapy will be. Um, so without further ado, let's get into this, this, this scoring system. C stands for congestive heart failure. If you have it, you get a point. H, hypertension, defined by a um, blood pressure of 140 over 90. If you have it, you get a point. Age, if you're over 75, you get two points. Uh, D stands for diabetes mellitus type 2. If you have that, you get a point. Uh, S, S2 uh, stands for prior stroke or thromboembolic event. If you've had these things in the past, as you can imagine, you're likely, you're, you're kind of predisposed to kind of getting them again. So uh, it's assigned two points. Uh, the V stands for vascular disease. This could be any kind of peripheral artery disease, MI, or just if you have any evidence of plaque, you get a point. The A stands for age. I think they're really just trying to harp on it, just how important um, your age is in the development of AFib. And instead of the 75 and greater, which was the prior age bracket, if you're 65 to 75, you get a point. Whereas before, if you were over 75, you get two points. Uh, and finally, the SC stands for sex, specifically female sex. Uh, if you're a female, you get a point. And so how does this all kind of corroborate? If you have a VAS score of, let's say, 4, your, chance, your annual risk of having a stroke is about 4% compared to the general public. Uh, similarly, if you have a CHAD's VAS score of 9, your... your uh, likelihood, you, you, you run a 15.2% risk of developing a stroke within the year. And so how did physicians use this score to determine the, the course of therapy? If you have a score of zero, your, your risk is obviously low. And so, you know, practitioners can decide whether or not to put a person on no therapy or on chronic aspirin therapy. And aspirin therapy will generally run either 75 to 325 milligrams um, by mouth per day. Um, if you have a score of one, they say your risk is moderate. And so it's kind of up to the pr practitioner to decide whether or not to put the person on oral anticoagulation or on aspirin therapy. And if they do, do decide to go with oral anticoagulation, you have a choice of either rivaroxaban um, or dibigatran or even warfarin therapy controlled to an INR of about two to three. Um, and then you can, you know, depending on what you're comfortable with or what goals you're trying to set for this patient. You can also give them aspirin, about 75 milligrams to about 325 milligrams, um, depending on the, the patient's preference. Although there is a uh, kind of a contentious, um, contentious, how do I say? Uh, right now, there's a little bit of conflict in, between the two camps, whether or not to give aspirin or whether or not to, give, to not give aspirin. But if you are, if your score is about a two plus or greater, they say you have a high risk of forming a clot. And so you are going to be put on oral anticoagulation therapy. And again, it's the rivaroxaban or the bigotran or the warfarin therapy, depending on either patient preference or um, practitioner preference. So the controversy with aspirin monotherapy, um, especially in low risk patients, it hasn't been really. It hasn't really been addressed. The study to address this did find a 20% reduction in the risk of stroke, but the results weren't statistically significant. Nor did they have a large sample size. Aspirin has been repeatedly shown to be inferior to warfarin therapy in the in the prevention of thromboembolic events, but oh, I think what's what's needed is just more studies and to, to kind of figure it out uh, what we do. Um, that's been it, and uh, hopefully, you know, you can use this for future patients.